guys, welcome back to Sparkman Homestead. My name is Krista, and guess what? We are on week seven. Week seven of the Pantry Challenge. We have been just pushing through. Now, last week we did purchase $9 worth of um, vegetables, and then this week we actually purchased $6 of lettuce, again, at the farmer's market. Now, last week I did get an Azure pickup, which I had $9 for sour cream in there. So, so far we are spending a little bit of money this week or this month, but we are definitely just pushing through this pantry challenge and really using the food that we have in the house. So tonight's meal is going to be from this cookbook. I actually think I have a couple meals this week that I am using this cookbook for. Um, tonight we are going to do what's called Becker Mongolian Beef. It is on page 477 of this cookbook. Um, so I got out some round steak last night. Now the recipe does call for a pound of beef sirloin tip or strip steak. I only have a couple of sirloin steaks left. So I actually just took a piece of our a package of round steak and just cut it up into strips. I think I have over a pound here. I'm actually gonna weigh it out um, just to see. Um, then for a side, we are going to have some edanami. These are from our garden last year, so I just froze them. And then I do have some chopped up corn. I just found this in my freezer. I did not realize, and it's not corn, it's carrots. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I found these in my freezer, so thought I would put them in. Now these are not on the recipe, but Stephen says when he goes to Panda and he actually gets Mongolia beef, they actually have carrots in it. So I thought, hey, I have a bag in the freezer. I've got to get that used up. Let's just throw it in because more vegetables, you really can't go wrong with that. So let's get started on making this. Um, in a small bowl, I need to get some soy sauce. It says um, tamari sauce, which is essentially just a soy sauce. I don't have the special stuff, so we're gonna use soy sauce. Um, then we need hot pepper sauce, just the hot sauce, and cornstarch and rice wine vinegar. So let's get all of that stuff out. So we're gonna add two tablespoons of soy sauce. Do I wanna double this? I think I'm actually gonna double this because these, rest, rest, these um, measurements look like it's, maybe not. Okay, we'll just go with what the recipe says. We'll just do it. We'll have faith in the book and we'll do it. So that's two tablespoons of soy sauce. And then it says two dashes of hot sauce, one tablespoon of rice wine vinegar, one tablespoon of cornstarch. I am using um, arrowroot though. Let's give this a little whisk. Now it calls for two tablespoons of peanut oil. We definitely do not have peanut oil in this house. So I am gonna use avocado oil and it says to put a large skillet over medium heat. So that's what we have right now. So let's add two tablespoons. So we're gonna get this heated up and then once it is heated up, we are going to add one one inch piece of ginger peeled and cut into thin strips. So that's what I have right here. And then we also need to add four cloves of garlic thinly sliced. So we're gonna use this because I don't actually have garlic cloves, which I hope this is gonna be fine because we actually have to take a slotted spoon and take this out after it's done cooking. So I don't know how well this is gonna work. Experiment. I think that's good and heated up. Yep, definitely is. It says to fry it for two minutes. Oh my gosh, that smells amazing. Mm. Then it says after two minutes to take a slotted spoon and then put it into a small bowl. All right, so as you can see, I burnt some of the garlic. I took it out right away. Um, oh. Got distracted trying to measure out the beef. So it says to turn the heat on to a medium high, and now we have to add that one pound of beef strips. 
and it says to brown in batches. I turned my heat down a little bit because as you can see, this is a hot skillet. Okay, I'm gonna pull this batch out and I'm just going to put it into a bowl and then we will get the next batch going. All right, so I'm taking the last of the beef out. What I'm gonna do now, I'm deviating a little bit away from the recipe because we are doing the carrots. So I'm going to put a touch more of avocado oil in here. And these carrots are still like half frozen, so I'm gonna fry them up for a little bit, and then we're gonna add the steak back into here. These carrots are looking good. I just tried one and they are cooked through. They still have a tiny little bit of crunch to them, which is fine. So we are gonna add the beef back, all the juices. We are gonna add the ginger and garlic. And then we are gonna add that um, cornstarch mixture or the air root mixture that we made. And it says to cook this for three to four minutes. Yeah, I'm feeling like that wasn't enough sauce. It also like is super, super thick. I also cooked up some brown rice here. So I'm just gonna reheat this. I have our edanami in our steamer basket and I just need to get this in the oven for five minutes. Or not the oven, excuse me, the microwave. We are making more sauce because I do not like that measurement. There's hardly any sauce in there. So we're just gonna double it. It's about two tablespoons of soy sauce, one tablespoon of rice wine vinegar, a couple more dashes of hot sauce, tiny little bit of arrowroot because that really thickened up. Add this sauce to it. We just, I'm adding more sauce because we like to have it nice and saucy over top of the rice. And that was just not enough sauce to my liking. So I, I just doubled it and I turned the heat back on. So it says to stir until thickened, like cook it until thickened. And then you're supposed to add scallions to this. It says to add three bunches of scallions cut into match stick pieces. And then it says cover and let it sit for five minutes until the scallions are cooked. But we're obviously not putting in onions. So we're just gonna, this is gonna be the finished product right here. I'm just gonna heat this sauce back up and then we are ready to eat. So the edamame is all done steaming. Just gonna put it in this bowl. We're just going to add a couple of things to this edamame. I like to add some of this stuff. It is just a uh, ground fresh chili paste. I like to add about a teaspoon in a bit. We're gonna add salt, quite a bit of salt. And then we're gonna add some rice wine vinegar. And we're probably gonna add maybe two to three tablespoons of water all together and then we are going to add a couple little dashes of um, soy sauce perfect all right that's it i'm going to come back when it's all plated up there it is i am so so excited about tonight guys this recipe really really good so i will leave the tab there um, and again that is from the joy of cooking cookbook super yum we are on day 45 so it is february the 14th valentine's day we don't really super celebrate it here so tonight i am going to make a little appetizer from this cookbook um, i am going to make a baked artichoke 
dip. I made some light rye sourdough bread today and I was hoping to take the sourdough bread and be able to dip it into the baked artichoke dip, kind of like a fancier meal. And then we are going to have pasta carbonara to go with it. I am also thinking about making a salad. We have some salad greens in here and I was thinking it would be nice to have a side salad as well. There's not a lot in here so it would just be like a really small side salad. So that's what we have planned for tonight. I have to get this artichoke dip started because it takes about 20 minutes to make and I kind of want to have that all done because the pasta carbonara, you kind of have to do it like right away. Um, so I just want to have that artichoke dip out of the way. So let's get started on that. So we have the oven preheating at 400 degrees and I have a small bowl here and to the, well, it says a medium bowl. We're gonna add one cup of mayonnaise, one cup of grated Parmesan cheese, and then it says half a cup of finely chopped onions. We're not gonna add the onions, so I am going to add a little bit of this onion powder to it, or granulated onion. I also have a platter here that I'm gonna put my dip in. One cup of grated Parmesan cheese, and then one cup of mayo. Then we're just gonna sprinkle in some of these. Scrantulated onion. Just give this a little light stir. So the next thing it calls for is a 13 and three quarter ounce can of artichoke heart drained. So we are going to use these 13.75, perfect measurement. So I'm just gonna open these up and get these drained. It says to take these and put them into a food processor until they are finely chopped. So I don't feel like getting my big one out. So we'll see if we can fit them all in this tiny little one. We always keep canned artichoke hearts on hand because we really love to have them in pasta and on pizza. So that is one thing that we actually have a stock of. That looks about good. I'm just gonna stir these into this mayonnaise cheese mixture. So we need to add to this bowl one tablespoon of lemon juice or you could use one tablespoon of dry white wine. We're just gonna use the lemon juice. And also it says a quarter to a half teaspoon of black pepper. So we like black pepper, so we're gonna go with the half a teaspoon. We're gonna get this all stirred. We've got our baking dish here, and it does not say anything about putting any type of like um, spray on this or anything. It just says to pour this into a baking dish. It says scrape into a small baking dish or an oven proof crock. Just gonna spread this out. And it is optional. You can put it into the oven just this way, but it says optional to sprinkle the top with three tablespoons of breadcrumbs. These are just some sourdough breadcrumbs that I made from a leftover loaf, and one teaspoon of olive oil. So we'll put the breadcrumbs, and then we will put one teaspoon of avocado oil on top of this. I don't know if the breadcrumbs are supposed to be mixed with the avocado. It doesn't say just says optional to put these on top. Maybe they needed to be mixed with it. Let's pour this over this bowl because this new container that I have is a little bit heavy, likes to come out quick. Okay, so let's just sprinkle this over top. Well, I've got most of it in that area. I'm feeling like the breadcrumbs need to be covered with this. We should have mixed it with the breadcrumbs. We're gonna put this in the oven now for 20 minutes. It says bake until brown. So let's get it in the oven. Oh, our oven isn't even preheated. So we'll just put it aside and then once the oven is preheated, we will put it in for 20 minutes. We're gonna get the carbonara started because I have water boiling over here for the pasta and we're gonna be using some homemade 
pasta that we made and it literally cooks within minutes. So I need to get the bacon going in here. These are just some bacon bits. And when I say bacon bits, I just mean like when we're slicing our bacon, like when we make the bacon and we slice it with our deli slicer, you get like all of these like odd end bacon pieces, which are absolutely perfect for this recipe. So we're just gonna get these frying up. We're gonna put about a tablespoon of butter in here. You can use this or you can use olive oil. Um, and I do know where I got this recipe from, so I will link it for you guys also in the description. We're just gonna turn this off for a minute because this bacon has to cook. And I don't wanna, the, this pasta literally will take not even two minutes. Should've separated these. I didn't realize there was big pieces like this in here, so now I'm just kind of cutting them up with my hand because I don't wanna have a big piece like that in my pasta. So in this recipe, it calls for either pancetta or like a thick sliced bacon. Obviously, we're using thinly sliced bacon, but that's fine, bacon is bacon and it will all taste delicious in here. So we're just gonna get this cooked up a bit and then we're gonna add some garlic right when this is almost done. While that's cooking up, we're gonna get these eggs ready. So we're gonna take three to four whole eggs and we're gonna mix them with half a cup of Parmesan cheese. The recipe calls for one cup of Parmesan cheese, but it says only add half to this mixture. And because this is carbonara, these are eggs that I actually just went out and got out of my coop today. So they are super fresh eggs. It says you can use Parmesan or, I'm gonna leave it below. We're gonna put about half a cup in here and just mix this together. We're gonna get this pasta water boiling again. That way we can just move the pasta over once it's done. And we're gonna heavily salt this water also. Oh, that's a timer for our dip. Let's get that out. Guys, I think I'm feeling like, this is what it's looking like. I think I wanna put it in for maybe five more minutes. Just to get it a little bit more brown. This is boiling again. So we're gonna heavily salt this water. And we're gonna add our noodles to it what the recipe calls for. The recipe calls for one pound of spaghetti, but you can also use fettuccine. So we're just gonna use our homemade egg noodle. We just need to add a little bit more to this. I'm also purposely making more than normal because Stephen takes this for leftovers for lunch the next day. We're gonna add our garlic to this. Just gonna saute it for about 30 seconds just for it to get nice and fragrant. Uh, the recipe calls to use one to two cloves or one teaspoon of already minced garlic. Okay, that is smelling fragrant. So our pasta is now al dente. I'm moving the noodles over to the pan with a little bit of that pasta water. And then once that's all kind of incorporated, I'm gonna take that Parmesan egg mixture and slowly pour it in. It helps to be using fresh um, room temperature eggs as well. I don't think I would really want to use cold eggs in this. So it's a little bit dry. I did reserve some of that pasta water. So we're going to put some of that in. I just want to get it a little bit more runny. Oh, we've got to get that dip out. Okay, that dip is done. Because I'm using that like pre grind or pre grated Parmesan, it's tending to not melt as good. So it looks like there's all of these like chunks in here. It's just the Parmesan that hasn't melted quite enough. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add quite a bit of pepper to this. We really do like the carbonara with a lot of pepper. So I probably added like half a teaspoon to three quarters teaspoon of pepper into this. And I also am going to get a little bit of salt in this as well. We're gonna add the other half of the Parmesan cheese now. It might add just a touch bit more salt. not pretty but it's yummy. I made some rye bread, um, sourdough rye bread yesterday and it turned out amazing. So I just thinly sliced it like that so it'll be good to have with our um, artichoke dip. I am also taking two small bowls and I'm going to put a little bit of this 
mixed with some avocado oil so that we can have that as dipping for the bread as well. I decided not to make the salad um, artichoke dip. Artichoke is a vegetable, so that'll be fine. And then I'm gonna take a little bit of this and put that into here as well. Just stir it up. That is supper for February the 14th, day 45. There's my plate, got my pasta, the yummy, yummy rye bread, and then we've got the dip, and then I am having a glass of white wine. Super excited about it. If you celebrate it, happy Valentine's Day, guys. We are on day 47 today, and I wasn't even going to film today, to be honest, because I am just making tacos. Well, we're going to have a taco salad, but essentially I'm just making tacos. But I thought I would turn the camera on anyways, because I do want to be accountable for all the meals that I am cooking during this pantry challenge. And by me recording them, that's me being accountable. <laughs> so I have some of these, these tortilla wraps. I just got them from Azure Standard. They have been in the fridge for a very long time and they are very, very like kind of stale. I thought I would try something as an experiment. I am just gonna take these and cut them because we're having salad, we're not doing just tacos on um, tortillas. I'm gonna try to make like a tortilla chip kind of that we can have maybe um, to dip into some salsa or just kind of have with the salad. So I'm just kind of cutting them like this. And then I have the oven preheating at 400 degrees right now, my cookie sheet. So I'm just gonna take them and just lay them on the cookie sheet. I actually might put the oven at 450. You can definitely make them smaller than this to really make it like a really good chip, but this is like perfect dippable size. These would be good with hummus also. Try not to overcrowd it because I wanna make sure that they all get baked right, but I have this many. So I think I'm gonna have to do a couple batches. So I have some avocado oil in this little sprayer here, and then I'm just gonna spritz them, and I'm gonna spritz them on both sides. This is an experiment. I've never actually done this before, so let's see how it turns out. And then I'm gonna take some salt, and just kind of coat them. Some of them have more salt than others. <laughs> and then maybe we'll put a little bit pepper on it, like just a little tiny bit. I'm wondering if we should put some taco seasoning on this. No, you know what we will do though? I have all of these like really fun seasoning things from Trader Joe's. I think that I am gonna put some of this stuff on it. We'll just sprinkle it on. It's a Cuban style citrusy, garlic seasoning blend. Let's just sprinkle some on. And then we'll flip them, and then we'll do the same with the other side. Just some salt, a little bit of pepper, and we'll spray them with some of this uh, avocado, avocado oil also. Probably don't need to double salt it because I, this actually has salt in it, so they might be really salty, but we're using them to dip. So that is good. We're gonna wait for the oven to preheat and then we'll get these put in. I think maybe 15 minutes, maybe, they'll take. We'll check them. I'm just looking for like a crunchy um, texture on them. We are gonna get our taco meat started now. I just have a pound of ground beef and then I'm gonna be using some of my homemade taco seasoning with this. So we're just gonna get this browned up first. And then while this is browning up, I actually need to get our, um, what is it called? I need to get our lettuce rinsed off. Our oven just beeped that it's preheated. Get that in. The beef is nice and brown now, so I'm just gonna add a couple of uh, tablespoons of our taco seasoning on this. Oh, shoot. That's a lot of teaspoons. That's gonna 
probably be too much. So we'll just, okay, that's fine. And then we'll add some water to that. It's gonna be a very flavored taco. I'm gonna add probably a little bit more water. I think these are done. We're gonna check them. That's what they look like, let's see. Looking pretty good. Crunchy, very, very salty. So it definitely needs like something to cut that salt. So we'll get the other ones done. So these ones, we are definitely not putting any salt on them at all. We'll just put this stuff on. It's very limey. Like it reminds me of like a salted lime chip in a way. Ooh, that's a lot. Flip them over and do the other side. I'm wondering if we need to even do seasoning on the other side. Let's try not to do seasoning on the other side because maybe one side of seasoning is enough. However, though, we will spray both sides with this. Okay, and I think that took about 10 minutes. I once heard something that it's very difficult to burn things on a pamper chef stoneware. I've mastered it. I've burnt the second batch. These are very, very crunchy ones. <laughs> oh well, we still have that bowl of the ones that I did not burn. All right, here is Steven's bowl. He seems to think that he is a Michelin chef, or whatever they're called, but this is his fancy version of his taco salad. Those are the things we just made together. And that is my salad. I actually have some of that Southwest salad dressing that we made last week. Um, so I'm gonna put a little bit of that on top of my salad and then a couple of those nacho chips that we just made together, but that is day 47's dinner. We are on day 48 today. For supper tonight, I am making a stir fry garlic chicken. And again, it is out of this cookbook. Um, it is on page 439. Um, it says that this recipe serves three to four people. We have to marinate it for about 30 minutes. So I am getting it started a little bit early because I do really want to get it good and marinated. For this recipe, we are kind of experimenting a little bit. What would be a recipe without me experimenting? I have this bone-in chicken that I canned up um, in November. I have not really found a use to use it in yet because it really, to be honest, does not look the appetizingest. Um, it's got bones in it and stuff. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use that. This recipe actually calls for one and a half pounds of boneless, skinless chicken breasts or thighs. So there are actually thighs in here, but there's also drumsticks. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take all of the meat off of the bones and we're gonna use that. And then we're gonna uh, marinate it in the sauce that we're gonna make up. Is we're gonna get that sauce made first and then we are going to strain this because this does actually have chicken broth in it, but we don't need to use that chicken broth in this recipe. And I'm gonna be taking the bones off and stuff. So we're just gonna strain these and um, get the meat pulled off of the bones. Let's get this sauce mixed up. And you know what guys, I am going to double this sauce mixture because I have learned with this cookbook, it does not make enough sauce that I actually like. So we're gonna double it. But I will give you the original um, measurements just so that you guys have them if you wanna make this. But no, when you're seeing me put it in here, I'm doubling it. So it calls for one tablespoon of Chinese cooking wine or a dry white wine. We are going to use this stuff. We need one teaspoon of sugar, two teaspoons of light soy sauce. I don't have light, so I'm just gonna use this stuff. And I'm gonna put four in, because again, we're doubling it. Two teaspoons of oyster sauce. So that's, we're gonna 
use there. I just added an extra bit because it's kind of sticking to the uh, measurement here. One teaspoon of salt. I am actually probably just gonna do one teaspoon. The reasoning is, is because we are not using a light soy sauce, we're using a regular one, and that does have a lot of salt in it. You need one tablespoon of cornstarch. I'm using arrowroot, and I'm gonna use two tablespoons. Again, doubling. Let's get this whisk together. Okay, so we have all of our chicken off of the bone and it really like shredded apart, which is fine. Hopefully it will work okay in this recipe. So we're just gonna add it to our sauce. And then we're gonna let this marinate for about 30 minutes. What you would really typically wanna do in this recipe is you would wanna cut one and a half inch by one and a half inch pieces of the chicken breasts or the chicken thighs. But because we're using our canned stuff, it's kind of shredded up. So it's gonna change the recipe a bit, but I think it'll be fine. And we're using what we have. I wanna get that canned chicken used. So we'll let this marinate for, it's only three o'clock. So we'll probably actually let it marinate for at least an hour. Okay, we are going to get the sauce mixed up. Again, remember, I am doubling this recipe. So we are going to put in, well, let's see. The recipe calls for one tablespoon of Hawaiian sauce. So we're gonna use this and I'm gonna put in, I'm almost tempted to triple it, but we'll just double it. Then we need one tablespoon of ketchup. And we need one tablespoon of toasted sesame oil. One and a half teaspoons of dark soy sauce, but we're using this soy sauce because that's all we have. So we're gonna put in three teaspoons. And then it calls for half a teaspoon of crushed red pepper flakes. I am going to use this stuff. It calls for half a teaspoon of crushed red pepper flakes. So we were gonna put half a teaspoon of this stuff in there. We're just gonna whisk it all together. It recommends to have all of your ingredients together because when you assemble it, it's just kind of a, it goes right along quickly. So it wants you to have four teaspoons of garlic, so we're just gonna use this stuff. One tablespoon of minced ginger. So I've already pre-cut up my ginger and I have it all minced up there. Then it calls for two thirds cup of chicken stock or broth. So we have that all measured out here. It also calls for half a cup of snow peas. We don't have that, so we're omitting it. It calls for one onion, medium onion, cut into quarter inch slices, three scallions cut lengthwise into two inch sections. So we're just gonna admit the onions, but I am going to put some granulated onion in its place on that so that we can still kind of get the onion flavor without the texture of the onion. And then it says to make that sauce, which we just did. Now this recipe says to cook everything in a wok. We're gonna use our big skillet here. It also calls for two tablespoons of peanut oil. I use avocado oil. And then we are going to briefly put the garlic and the ginger in here just until it's slightly browned. And then we are going to add the chicken pieces. Hey guys, I am thinking that using canned chicken was an absolute, absolute fail. It is all like mushy. I don't know how we can possibly fix this. I don't know why the texture turned out like that. Okay, we had a absolute major flop with that chicken. I actually ended up giving it to the chickens. It turned out to be like a paste mush. I don't know if you've seen it in the last clip, but totally absolutely unedible it was disgusting so we're gonna improvise a little bit this is what happens <laughs> so Stephen came up with the idea let's make just like a stir fry we just sat down and shelled the last of our edamame beans these are from our garden that we grew last year so there's not a lot of them in here so we shelled those then we just steamed up some broccoli from our fall garden so we got that. I have 
a can of carrots here that we're gonna drain and put in there. We're gonna put some garlic in, and then we're gonna use that sauce that we made for the chicken, like not the first batch, but that Hoatian sauce. We're gonna use that to kind of season everything with a little bit of chicken broth to kind of water it down. We are also going to potentially be putting the rice in it to kind of make it like a, um, like a rice stir fry, I guess you could say. Fried rice, that's the word I'm looking for. You know what else would be delicious in there? If we put an egg, because fried rice always has eggs. So we'll do that also. We're gonna take these edamame beans and we are actually going to um, fry them up in this stuff. I, I need to get those carrots drained as well. So we're just gonna reheat this pot. I had to wash that pot out. We're gonna put some sesame oil in this. A little goes a long way with that stuff. So we're gonna put our edamame beans in. And we're gonna put our carrots in. And our broccoli. I'm just gonna get this stir fried. I'm gonna actually cut these pieces of broccoli up because they're very big. Just gonna get our eggs cracked and then beat up a bit before we add it to this. I had pre-made some brown rice, so we're gonna get that added in also. But we'll add that kind of near the end. Just want to get these vegetables fried up a little bit more. So I think what we're gonna do is we are gonna dilute this with a little bit of chicken broth so it's a little bit more runny. And if we need to add any more, then we will later. Okay, so I just kind of cleared a little spot off right here. We're gonna put this egg in and we're gonna fry it up. Okay, we're gonna mix that egg in with the rest of this stuff. Okay, and let's add a little bit of the rice. Okay, and now we're gonna add our sauce to this. Guys, this is, this is really just being flexible. <laughs> Steven came up with a wonderful idea of doing a vegetable stir fry. I wouldn't have thought of it because I thought that, you know, he would want some type of meat, but this is so, such a good idea. I'm super excited about it. We're just gonna heat this through and then that is gonna be supper. That was such a, a last minute meal improv improvised. My suggestion when making that recipe from the Joy Cookbook, it, it, amazing recipe, just make sure you're using like not canned chicken. It doesn't do well in that recipe. I'm trying to think of like where I would be able to use that canned chicken. I'm thinking that like maybe in like maybe an enchilada it might work out good or some type of like casserole where it doesn't where it can be shredded like that. I don't know, it was, I've never had a canned meat do that before. It just turned to like this, like paste. Steven said it looks like cat food. <laughs> so it was just a, it was a flop. <laughs> no error of the, it was nothing to do with the recipe itself. It was me trying to go off the recipe and use canned chicken. But now we get to have this delicious garden fresh meal. It's nice. Okay, we just gave it a taste test and it was it was lacking something. So I put a little bit of soy sauce in it and Steven suggested that we put this stuff in it. I tell you, Steven needs to be the one making these cooking videos. He's coming up with the good ideas. So we're just gonna use the rest of it because there's hardly any in here and we like spicy stuff much better. Maybe a little bit more of this. Okay. We're gonna turn it off and then get it all plated up. Okay, so that concludes week seven of the pantry challenge. Last night's meal was a perfect example on why we keep a stocked pantry and a stocked freezer. Like if, if we had not had those things already in the freezer, I think we would have probably been forced to probably do takeout. And that's why we're doing this challenge to kind of keep us on our toes and keep the ideas coming so that we can use what we have stocked up and took the time and, and energy to grow in our gardens. So it, I was super, super happy with the way that yesterday 
yesterday's meal turned out. I completely forgot to come back and get a clip for you guys and show you what it looked like, but it was delicious and we were so hungry because by the time that we had gotten it all plated up, it was pretty late. So I'm sorry I did not get that to show you. Um, and I am actually cutting this week a little bit short because tonight, it is Saturday now, I am just making a simple pasta meal, like just pasta sauce, ground beef, and just noodles. A plain and simple one. I have been making this sourdough ciabatta, and I do have a video, which you guys are probably going to actually see that video before you see this one. Um, so we're going to have that tonight with that quick and easy meal, and then I will start the videos again on Sunday for a week eight can you believe week eight that's probably going to be our last week oh i'm still i think i'm still going to um do videos with you guys and just kind of show you what we are still making during the week i personally love watching what we eat in a week videos it really does give me a lot of inspiration on meals that i can cook using stuff in my pantry because a lot of the videos that i watch of people making these what we eat in a week are people that are a lot like me that do the, the gardening and do the preserving. So I'm going to keep these videos coming for you guys because like I said, I, I really enjoy watching them. So again, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. I would greatly appreciate it. And I hope you have a great day or night whenever you're watching this. And I will see you on the next video. Bye guys.